Yo guys, Jonathan here. The iPhone XR is here in all of its colorful glory. I've used it, I've tested it, and this is my review. So this is the iPhone XR. In addition to this beautiful, beautiful blue, it also comes in white, black, yellow, product red, and who could forget, now one thing I wanna get out of the way is something that I felt the second the iPhone XR was announced, and that's the fact that I think it's just a little overpriced. Not by a ton, it starts out at 749, but I think if Apple like smacked $50 off the price tag, it would have gone a long way. You could buy one of these beautiful dbrand skins that Marvel in Blue was meant to be. Now I realize 50 bucks isn't a ton of money, but I think there's something about knowing that, hey, even though it's just a dollar under 700 bucks, it's still under there. Whereas with 749, you are rapidly approaching that $800 price tag. What's interesting though, is if you wanna bump up the storage on the iPhone XR from 64 up to 120 gigabytes, it's only 50 bucks. But imagine if you drop that down a notch. It's been a long day. Imagine if the 64 gigabyte iPhone XR started at 699, you then have the 120 gigabyte option coming at 749, and that is the bam, nailed it, home run, knocked it out of the park, give Tim Cook a fist bump or a high five, whatever your thing is, this is the phone you should buy. That being said though, there is a lot of really good with the iPhone XR. And as you see throughout the video, it shares a lot in common with the more expensive iPhone XS and XS Max. Next from there, let's go ahead and talk about that display, which I can assure you is not depressing. First though, we gotta take a trip to the schoolhouse because my friends, PPI, or pixels per inch, and screen resolution are two completely different things. So because the internet, some of you out there may have heard the iPhone 4, yes, the iPhone 4, and the iPhone XR share the same pixel density of 326 pixels per inch and assumed, wow, the 6.1 inch iPhone XR in 2018 has the same resolution as the iPhone 4. What the heck is Apple doing? Fact check. The iPhone 4, bless its tiny little heart, has a resolution of 960 by 640, whereas with the iPhone XR, just a couple more pixels, has a resolution of 1792 by 828, which gives it approximately 869,000 more pixels. Now, if you're used to an OLED display, you can absolutely see this looks like an LCD panel. But with that said, and pixels aside, what Apple did with this is really impressive. It's bright, it's accurate, the colors are beautiful. There is no HDR, which is kind of a bummer, but again, this is $250 cheaper, so there are going to be sacrifices. The first of which being after the lack of HDR is that bezel, which is giant if you compare it to the iPhone XS and XS Max. Now, to be honest, it's not really a huge deal, and like most things, when you use it, you kind of don't really notice it, but being used to the iPhone XS, it was one of the first things that stood out to me, so I at least wanted to point it out. That aside though, what Apple's doing with this LCD and those rounded corners is really unique. Like nobody is doing this. If you haven't yet, The Verge did a really fantastic breakdown of how all that tech works and how Apple pulls it off. So if you have a minute, definitely check out the video and tell Neelai Jonathan sent you. From there, the next omission on the iPhone XR is going to be 3D Touch. I kind of talked about it in my unboxing where Apple may get rid of 3D Touch altogether as soon as next year, so I'm not sure how big of a deal it is, but on the flip side, you do get a 3D Touch-like alternative with haptic touch. What it is essentially is a long press with haptic feedback that works in two places, the lock screen and control center. Now with the lock screen, it is worth noting that you do have tap to wake, which is awesome, but as far as that haptic touch, you can either quickly activate the flashlight or access the camera. From there, within Control Center, by long pressing, you can dive deeper into pretty much every single possible setting from Wi-Fi to the camera to the timer to brightness, so it is nice having some sort of alternative. Now, sadly, this will not work on the apps on your main home screen, so if you long press, you just quickly have the option to either delete or move an app just like we're normally used to, so that's a bit of a bummer, but again, I do appreciate the fact that we have at least some sort of alternative. From there, to address a question that I've seen pop up everywhere, which is cool candy-colored phone, bro, 
but can you even watch 1080p? So within the YouTube app, you actually do have the option to select 1080p. And with this being technically 828p, which is more than 720, you're getting a downscale version of 1080p, which is definitely sharper. From there, man, just chill for a second. How does it feel knowing that candy colored iPhone that you keep making fun of is faster than pretty much every Android phone out there? For real though, the iPhone XR is a really fast phone. It is worth noting though that you do have three gigabytes of RAM as opposed to four on the XS, but with iOS 12 and that A12 chip, it's a smooth, fluid, buttery experience from day-to-day -day use all the way down to gaming. From there though, design-wise, I really, really love these colors and it's kind of making me think of using this over the iPhone XS Max. You don't get stainless steel sides, but I actually kind of prefer the aluminum because that allows the color matching which complements the phones beautifully. If you were part of iPhone XR launch day, your sub box might've looked like something straight out of Power Rangers, thank you, Phil. But for real though, if you guys wanna check out the other colors, Judner had white, Justine had coral, Marquez had red, The Verge had black, and I'm sure I'll find one with yellow and link that down below as well. So here's a look at the iPhone XR stack side by side against the iPhone 8 Plus, the XS and the XS Max. And honestly, it's kind of like the three of those did some stuff I'm not really allowed to talk about on camera and out came the iPhone XR. I'm kind of really sold on the form factor, which sits right smack in the middle of the iPhone XS and XS Max. Yes, you lose the OLED display. Yes, you lose some resolution, but with those colors and how many features it does share with the iPhone XS, I'm kind of leaning towards using this phone. So with that theme of shared features on the iPhone XR, you also get Face ID, which for me has always worked really well to the point where I don't really ever miss having a fingerprint reader. You have True Tone Display, you have stereo speakers, which honestly sound just as good as the iPhone XS and XS Max. You have wireless charging, you have water resistance, although it is worth noting that the iPhone XR is IP67 rated, not IP68 like the iPhone XS and XS Max, but it is nice knowing that you're not gonna have to stress about getting your nice shiny colored phone a little wet. The one interesting element with the iPhone XR for sure though is going to be the camera. On the back, you have a single lens as opposed to the dual setup on the iPhone XS and XS Max. It's actually the exact same wide angle lens found on the iPhone XS and XS Max. You're just missing that telephoto lens, but the good news is you still do have portrait mode on both the rear and front facing cameras. What's up guys, Ty Lopez here at Hollywood Hills Flex Knowledge and my, I'm kidding, it's not mine. I'm actually just showing off the front facing camera on the iPhone XR stereo recording. So let me know what you guys think of the quality of the video and audio with a comment down below. From there, hopping over to the camera samples, if there was any doubt about this camera, put those away because it performed really well. This shot in particular is a really good example of the smart HDR where the background, the sky is exposed properly, but we still have the foreground looking punchy, saturated, and really sharp. Same thing here with Mr. Pumpkin. It's bright, it's punchy, it's saturated, but we also retain a ton of detail. So if we zoom in, we can see that sticker shows up. This pumpkin was from Pumpkin Pampered Farms. It's a lot of peas, but it looks good. From there, hopping over to Mr. Ty Lopez's whip. Kidding, I have no idea whose this is, but it's a good example again of that smart HDR where the sky is exposed perfectly, but we have that really punchy foreground, especially with that Carl Conrad orange. This shot here is also a really good example of how much detail is retained. So if we zoom in, we can read the text right off those laces. Now portrait mode on the iPhone XR is a little different than the iPhone XS because you're using that singular lens and everything is done through software. Because of that, it will unfortunately only work when a person is in and detected in the frame. So sorry, Mr. Fire Hydrant, no portrait shot for you. The other interesting thing is because the iPhone XS and XS Max use a telephoto lens, the iPhone XR is going to be significantly wider. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't get shots like this on the iPhone XR. It just means you have to treat it like a prime lens and then move closer to your subject. That aside though, portrait mode on the iPhone XR isn't perfect, but more often than not, it works really well. Some people are going to want and need that telephoto lens, but honestly, for the majority of people out there, you're going to be really happy with this single camera. What absolutely is awesome is just like the iPhone XS, you also get adjustable aperture on the iPhone XR. From there, hopping over to the front-facing camera, before we hop into portrait mode, here's just a regular front-facing shot. I've kind of talked about it where I still wish the iPhone front-facing camera was a little bit wider. That's where I think the Google Pixel 3 excels, but overall, great quality, and shout out to Ricardo for saying hi. Naturally, though, we've got to talk about those portrait selfies, which again, the iPhone XR does a really good job. Again, just like the iPhone XS and the rear-facing camera, you also have adjustable 
aperture on the iPhone XR front-facing camera, so here's an example of no blur all the way to crank that baby wide open. Now, I've talked about it with the iPhone XS. It's not a beauty filter that's applied to your face, but rather it's noise reduction over the entire image. So if you don't have the ideal lighting conditions, you're definitely going to see that here as well. The good news is, like I also mentioned in that video, is that it's software-based, and actually Apple is working on a fix to reduce that very soon. Overall, though, the cameras on the iPhone XR definitely deliver. Smart HDR is awesome. Again, the camera isn't perfect every single time, but the majority of the time, you are going to be extremely pleased. Now, in an area where I don't think the iPhone can be touched right now, and this applies also to the iPhone XR, is video. The iPhone XR does continuous 4K 60 frames per second video, which is super fun to slow down. You can also do 1080p video up to 240 frames per second, which is awesome, but really, even that classic 4K 24 or 30 frames per second with the stabilization with that HDR is amazing, and here's a montage of some of the best stuff I caught. So yeah, iPhone XR has a great camera, it takes great video, it's fast, it's fluid, the speakers sound great. Yeah, you definitely sacrifice a little bit with that LCD panel versus OLED, but honestly, I think it looks great. And really, I think this is the iPhone that most people should buy. What is probably the secret sauce, the underrated feature of the iPhone XR though, has gotta be battery life. It is actually better than the iPhone 8 Plus, which was a monster. So yeah, you lose a few pixels, but overall for what you get, and if you're about that all day battery life, again, this is the iPhone you should buy.